at Axbridge, up above the town, uh, reservoir in the background, all the strawberry fields that were, and uh, I suppose this would be back in the, about 1950, about 1950s, one, 52, yeah, that would be about it. And uh, the idea was that, that we were going to take a, a well, here you are, the party of people going up the hillside. Uh, the idea was to make a film in the ochre cave, which isn't a very big cave, but um, it's, it's you know, well decorated with stalagmite. And the chap that was going to do it was a chap called Ev Humphreys, who uh, had, a, had the Bridge Studios in Bridgewater. I think it's now the, the Argus shop uh, uh, on the riverside in Bridgewater. But he had the studios and uh, of course in those days if you had a, a, a city camera that was a, that was a step up from an ordinary still camera. So all this was quite, uh, quite cutting edge technology of the day. And that, this is the, the rather uh, steep hillside that went up uh, to the ochre mine. The, the, uh, I think that last person in the picture there was Mrs. Humphreys. Uh, the chap in the front is Donald McKean. Uh, who, strangely enough for his Scots name, spoke with a Welsh accent. Uh, and he was the secretary of the Axbridge Cave and Group. Uh, let's see if we can get the other people. Um, and this is, this is walk, walking through the little quarry at the, that led into the ochre mine. Now the chap with the white um, pulling the, the starter on the generator there's a man called Popol, and uh, I think he was a builder from Highbridge. Uh, the chap, and there's, there's, the chap now pulling the starter is, who? I don't, can't really see. Now, now the, the chap that's pulling the starter now, his name was Ham. And there's the yeah, that's that's Mr. Ham. I've forgotten what their uh, Christian names were, but no doubt. And the, the man in the picture, there, the other chap in the picture on the left, that's Jack Weir. There's a group there, McKeon throwing the cable up to the generator which for some reason or other we had up on the ledge, why we couldn't have had it on the ground where it was easy to get at it, I don't know, but <clears throat> there it is. The generator uh, would have been supplied by Jim Emerson, who eventually became the owner of these films. And there we are, that's going into the ochre rift, into the mine, and uh, the, the mine itself it is goes down, but to get into the ochre cave, which is the upper part of the rift, the bit that hadn't filled up with ochre, uh, you have to climb up a ladder. There we are, and climb up into it. And here we are, here's the... Climbing up into the... So do you enter the cave from its bottom? That's right. Yeah. Uh, there we are. This is this is the main part of the rift. Just as you come up over the over the ladder, that's Jack Weir. And there's just a a fiddle in the distance there, but that, that's Jack. This is, now I don't know who that is, although I rec recognise him, I can't remember his name. That's Jack Weir's son, 
Yeah. That's David Weir. And we had a line, a line in there and a signalling system um, over to the generator. When they wanted more power, somebody would tweak something and uh, you would get a bit more power. And there we are in the cave itself. That's Major McKean again. Or Donald McKean, the secretary. And uh, right at the very top of the left, rift, there he is, shoving somebody who I don't recognise up into the very rift, and that is very, very tight, and gets you up into a tiny little chamber um, at the very top, highest part of the cave, which can only be a few feet from the surface, I expect. And um, well, when you get in there, you wonder what all the effort was about, because there's nothing there. That's... Uh, There we go. Now this person here, this is Percy Baker. And he's wearing an old an old fashioned World War II helmet. So that's Percy and who he's pulling out, if I can see the face. No, I don't recognise him. But the cave itself is very well decorated with lots of uh, very small cave, but it's got lots of very nice stalagmites in there. And very stained with ochre, as you can see. Of course, nowadays, you just nip in there with a... No, I don't know who that is. You just nip in there with a, a little camera and film all this quite nicely, but... Uh, back in the 1950s, this was quite a, an effort to, to, to get the stuff up, up together and to get it all organised. And f another part of the cave, there was a water rift. Lots of very nice stalagmites and a, and a, a rift where um, that, that filled up with water. We might... I think we might see that in a minute. Of course, I think the, the, the they dwelt quite a lot on the on the, the stalagmite. I expect to explore the whole cave wouldn't take me more than about a quarter of an hour, but uh, because it was easy access, we could get the stuff in there. Here we are, here we are all congratulating ourselves. See, yeah, that there's. Uh, I, I can't I can't remember the names or or quite recognise all of the people, but that that's Donald McKeon there. Now that is Ev Humphreys himself. That was the photographer. Him. He was the proprietor of Bridge Studios. Yeah. I don't think at the time that we were making it that we thought that we, that we thought that it was going to go down in history as probably the first colour film to be made in the country, but we did know that it was quite unusual to to have colour film of anything. Who's this uh, other little figure there? You had to be a bit careful in parts of the cave because if you did slip, you would disappear down the hole in the floor, which led down into the mine. So you had to be a little bit careful that you what you were up to. Well, yeah. There 
I think that the, 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 the main object of the exercise really was to try and... Um, I know that is Alan Weir, Jack's elder son. There were all little sort of windows in the in the rift where the stalagmite had formed and left little holes into the next part of the rift so you couldn't really see crawl through but you could see through. Or yeah. great excitement. When we sort of experimented with this, with the idea of colour photography in the case. This is the hillside at Axbridge, up above the town, uh, reservoir in the background, all the strawberry fields that were, and uh, I suppose this would be back in the, about 1950, about 1951, 52, 52, I think 52 yeah, that would be about it. And uh, the idea was that, that we were going to take a, a, well here you are, it's the party of people going up the hillside. Uh, the idea was to make a film in the ochre cave, which isn't a very big cave, but um, it's, it's you know, well decorated with stalagmite. And the chap that was going to do it was a chap called Ev Humphreys, who uh, had a had the Bridge Studios in Bridgewater. I think it's now the, the Argus shop uh, uh, on the riverside in Bridgewater. But he had the studios and uh, of course in those days if you had a, a, a cine camera that was, a, that was a step up from an ordinary still camera. So all this was quite, uh, quite cutting edge technology of the day. And that, this is the, the rather uh, steep hillside that went up uh, to the ochre mine. The, the, uh, I think that last person in the picture there was Mrs. Humphreys. Uh, the chap in the front is Donald McKean. Uh, who, strangely enough for his Scots name, spoke with a Welsh accent. Uh, and he was the secretary of the Axbridge Caving Group. Uh, let's see if we can get the other people. Um, and this is, this is walk, walking through the little quarry at the, that led into the ochre mine. Now the chap with the white um, pulling the, the starter on the generator a man called Popol, and uh, I think he was a builder from Highbridge. Uh, the chap, and there's, there's, the chap now pulling the starter is, who? I don't, can't really see. No, 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 the chap that's pulling the starter now, his name was Ham.
No, I don't recognise them. But the cave itself is very well decorated with lots of uh, very small cave, but it's got lots of very nice stalagmites in there. And very stained with ochre, as you can see. Of course, nowadays you just nip in there with a. No, I don't know who that is. You just nip in there with a, a little camera and film all this quite nicely. But uh, back in the 1950s, this was quite a an effort to to, to get the stuff up, up together and to get it all organised. And another part of the cave, there was a water rift. Lots of very nice stalagmites and a, and a, a rift where um, that that filled up with water. We might I think we might see that in a minute. Of course, I think the, the they dwelt quite a lot on the on the, the stalagmite. I expect to explore the whole cave wouldn't take me more than about a quarter of an hour, but. Uh, because it was easy access, we could get the stuff in there. And well, here we are, all congratulating ourselves. Let's see, yeah, that, there's... Uh, I, I, can't, I can't remember the names or, or quite recognise all of the people, but... That, that's Donald McKeon there. Now that is Ev Humphreys himself. That was the photographer. That's him. He was the proprietor of Bridge Studios. Yeah. I don't think at the time that we were making it that we thought that we, that we thought that it was going to go down in history as probably the first colour film to be made in the country. But we did know that it was quite unusual to to have colour film of anything. Who's this um, other little figure there? You have to be a bit careful in parts of the cave because if you did slip, you would disappear down the hole in the floor, which led down into the mine. So you have to be a little bit careful that you what you were up to. Uh, yeah. I think that the, 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 the main object of the exercise really was to try and um, I know that is Alan Weir, Jack's elder son. There were all little sort of windows in the in the rift where the stalagmite had formed and left little holes into the next part of the rift so you couldn't really see crawl through but you could see through. All great excitement. When we sort of experimented with this, with the idea of colour photography in the cave, F. Humphreys took a lot of still photographs to begin with, and uh, they were lit. That the lighting was provided by Jim Emerson. And we used just a, a carbon arc, two carbon rods, quite unshielded from anything, and just struck them together. And of course, for several days afterwards, none of us could see very well. <laughs> it was an absolutely stupid thing to do, really, but that, that's it. Just two big, big 
carbon, but lumps of carbon sparkling together. Yeah. Yeah, and that is along the water rift. Very strange because although uh, it was quite hollow underneath, for some reason or other, part of the, the rift had narrowed right down and stalagmited over, so it had a, 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 a very long pool of water in it. And what's happening here? Oh, I think this is the exit. Yes, going down. The ladder that we used to get up into the cave was really a piece of the old railway line that used to serve the little narrow gauge railway that they used to use in the mine. They didn't have engines or anything to push it along, they just had a, it was just push the trucks along by hand out through the entrance which are there going now. There's the entrance to the cave and mine. It's probably one of the most impressive cave entrances on Mendip, I should think that, leading into a tiny little cave. Um, and the railway track used to run in. Now this is this is uh, the end bit here where everybody uh, congratulates themselves on a, a wonderful job. And uh, it does eventually uh, that's that's Mrs. Humphreys there, and it does entry end up, but they try and make a little little uh, sort of schema um, carbide lamps versus electric lamps, sort of a little pantomime. It's an electric, electric lamp there. They and the carbide lamp. which is the best but they agree to disagree I think in the end and that's the end of the film